Now, one of the questions we try to work at, of course, is attempting to interpret uh, the meaning of Jesus within this, this, uh, this Islamic uh, worldview. Uh, because the perception by so many Muslims is that when uh, Christians say Jesus is the Son of God, is what they mean is that God had a wife and had a spouse. Of course, we don't mean that. But that's, that's the notion, that that may be what we mean. And so Muslims worry about that, as would all of us. Uh, we don't believe that. We, that's, that's polytheism. That's, that's rubbish. We lay that aside. But there's that concern that that might be what we mean. And so we need to find a way to address that concern. And I'd, I'd like to say a word about that in our concluding session today. Uh, and what I will do is uh, go to a mosque in London that I went to on one occasion and um, about 400 people in the mosque that night and the 300, uh, three hours of dialogue. And at the end of the, the last hour, uh, on my desk came this question, do you believe Jesus is the Son of God? So I'll just share with you how I, how I interpreted that, how I responded to that question, keeping in mind this kind of worldview that I put up here. I said, first of all, let's just put aside any notion that Jesus uh, that, that the Son of God means that God had a spouse and had a son. That's rubbish. Let's put it out the door. But the name Son of God was given to Jesus by God himself, not by humankind. Twice God spoke from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. And when the angel Gabriel came to the Virgin Mary to announce the birth of Jesus, the angel Gabriel said he will be called the Son of God. So we better take note. What does God mean by that name, Son of God? It's not a name given to Jesus by humankind, but by God himself. Now I said in the mosque that night, when I look at the Quran, I notice that Jesus is called Kalimatullah. Kalimatullah, meaning the word of God. I said, I think that when you say that, what you mean is that God spoke and Jesus is created in the womb of the Virgin Mary just as God spoke and Adam was created. Is that what you mean? And every head in the mosque is saying, yes, 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 that's what we mean. I'm saying that because we need to be careful not to assume that when Muslims say that Jesus is kalimatullah, the word of God, what they mean is incarnation. They don't. As I read the Koran, I don't think that's what the Koran thinks. I think the Koran is advising that what it means is that God spoke and Jesus is miraculously formed in the womb of the Virgin Mary. I think that's what the Koran means. But I said to the Muslims, my task tonight is to share with you what the Bible says about that. And so I would like to, I would like to report what the Bible says about Jesus as Kalimatullah, meaning the Word of God. The word, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all humankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never overcome it. And then I dropped down, and I said, and we read on in verse 14 in the same passage. The Word became human and made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is to say that in the gospel we see that Jesus the Messiah is truly, truly kalimatullah. Truly, truly the Word of God. Not in the sense that through the Word Jesus is created, no, but in the sense that he is the Word through whom all of creation happens and is sustained. He is the eternal word. And you can never separate God from his word. God and his word have to be one. And so when we meet Jesus, we're meeting the word of God, the self-expression of God, the creative word that sustains and creates the universe. That's what we're meeting in Jesus the Messiah. And so we say he is not, <laughs> he is indeed the word in fullness. He is the gospel in fullness. You can never put a wedge between God and his word. God and his word have to be one. And so when we meet Jesus, we're meeting the full revelation of God himself. That's what Son of God means. The word became human and lived among us. We've seen his glory as about the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 
And I said in the mosque, when you open up the Bible, the Injil, the Gospel, you will notice that the first um, book within the Gospel, there's four books in the Gospel. The first book is called Matthew. Let's just imagine that this chair is Jesus the Messiah for a moment. That's rather irreverent, but that's what we'll just imagine that, okay? And so Matthew describes this one who is the word from heaven, Jesus the Messiah, from this perspective. And then you read on, you come to Mark. And so Mark is describing Jesus the Messiah, the word from heaven, from this perspective. And then you read on and you come to Luke. And Luke is describing this one who came from heaven, Jesus the Messiah, the living word, from this perspective. And you read on and you come to John. And here is John describing this one who came from heaven, the eternal word. Why these four witnesses, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Ah, it's because God wanted us to be sure of the truth of who this Jesus is. If you go to a court and there's only one witness, the matter will not be sustained. It will not be sustained. But if you have four witnesses, the matter will be sustained. In fact, God shows additional witnesses also, who also wrote some portions of Scripture and who were witnesses to Jesus in his resurrection and in his crucifixion. These 12 are called apostles, men who knew Jesus well, who worked with him and, and, uh, and traveled with him. And so you also have those witnesses. Not all of them wrote books, but you also have that apostolic witness. And so you have the four who wrote books, but you also have additional witnesses in addition to them. Why all these witnesses? It's because Jesus, because God wanted so badly for us to know the truth of this one who is Jesus the Messiah, the Savior of the world who is the truly, truly, Kalimatullah, the word from heaven. So that's what we mean by Jesus as Son of God. When we meet Jesus, we're meeting the one who is the full revelation of God, for you can never put a wedge between God and his word. And then I said in the mosque, let me surprise you. There's one more surprise I have to share with you tonight. I said, and my those dear Muslim friends, they were just listening with such great attention, so respectfully. I said, Son of God also means that Jesus the Messiah had a perfect relationship with God. Father-Son relationship. Perfect relationship. Loving relationship. A relationship. Jesus said, all that the Father wants me to do, I do. When you see me, you've seen the Father. He said, I and the Father are one. Jesus always addressed God, the creator of the universe, as his loving Father, as his Father. How he prayed, dressed his prayers to God the Father. You see? And I said, now the great surprise is when we believe in Jesus the Messiah, we are also introduced into God's family and begin to know something of what it is to know God as our loving Heavenly Father. Never in the perfect way that Jesus the Messiah understood it and experienced it, his oneness with the Father, <laughs> but we're understanding something of what Jesus the Messiah was about when he addresses God as his Father. We know something about that, something wonderful about that. We're also tasting something of what the, all of that is about. And that's why as Christians, when we pray to God, we pray to our loving Heavenly Father as his sons and daughters. So I said tonight with humility, but great joy I bear witness I am a son of God, not the son. No, no, no. Jesus is the son. He was the perfect son. He had the perfect relationship. But I am tasting something of what that is about. And so I bear witness with humility and much joy. God is my loving heavenly father with whom I commune and fellowship day by day. Through Jesus, I've been brought into his family. And so I know God as loving heavenly father. In fact, Jesus taught us to, to pray that way. So when you pray, pray our Father who art in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven. What a privilege. What a joy. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. 
you have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.